Hi everyone, welcome to episode 9. Uh, today we're going to be looking at wall jumping. So this is the sort of result we're aiming for. First of all, when we jump on a wall, we want to slowly slide down it, as if our character is actually sort of gripping onto the wall. And uh, while we're sliding down the wall, when we jump, we want to be able to perform three different types of jumps depending on our X input. So uh, say our input is toward the wall that we're sliding down. Uh, then we will do this uh, sort of wall hop where, where we're actually climbing up the wall. Um, if there's no X input while we're sliding down the wall when we jump, uh, we'll just sort of hop off the wall like so. And finally, if there's input away from the wall when we jump, then uh, we're going to do this massive sort of wall leap like this. So that's what we're going to be implementing right now. Okay, so before we begin, I'm just going to quickly set up a scene here with two long walls for us to jump between. All right, and let's open up the player script, and I'm going to, at the top of the update method, just create a bool wall sliding equal to false by default. And we want to now check for the case where wall sliding will be true. So in order for it to be true, we need to be colliding with a wall to the left or to the right of our character. Our character needs to not be touching the ground and also needs to be moving downwards. So if controller.collisions to the left or controller.collisions to the right. So if either one of those are true and we are not Oops, not controller dot collisions dot below. And we are moving down. Velocity dot y is less than zero. If all these things are true, then wall sliding is true. And we want to constrain our downward speed to some wall slide speed limit. So let's create a public float wall slide speed max, and I'll just set this equal to three. And we'll say that if our velocity dot y is less than negative uh, wall slide speed max, then we'll just reset velocity y equal to negative wall slide speed max, so we can never surpass that. Okay, so if we go into Unity and press play, should see that we're now nicely sliding down the walls. Um, one problem is that the controller 2D script is only detecting horizontal collisions if we're in fact moving horizontally. So uh, in this case, where I'm just sort of sitting idly, if I press jump, um, I'm not going to wall slide because it's not detecting the wall that I'm next to. So to fix this, let's go into the controller 2D script and uh, we want to check for horizontal collisions even if x is equal to zero. So we'll just remove that if statement. And uh, we can't, of course, have horizontal rays equal to zero. So we need to remember the direction that we were moving in. In other words, the direction our character is facing. Um, so let's just store this in the collision info. We can have a public int uh, face direction. So one would mean the character is facing right, and negative one would mean it's facing left. So just so it has a starting value, let's uh, in the start method just say collisions dot uh, face direction is equal to one. And in the move method, we'll update that. If velocity dot x is not equal to zero, then collisions dot face direction is equal to the sign of velocity dot x. And face direction is an integer, mathf dot sign is a float. So we just need to cast this to an integer. And now in the horizontal collisions, instead of saying direction x is equal to the sine of velocity x, we'll simply set that equal to collisions dot face direction. And uh, after we've set the ray length, we want to say if velocity dot x is less than our skin width, um, this should actually be the absolute value of velocity x, since velocity could of course be negative. Um, if it's less than skin width, then we just want to set it equal to two times skin width. So the one skin width is, of course, for uh, just moving the ray to the edge of the collider. 
and the second skin width is just so that we've got some distance within which to detect the wall. So if we save that and go into Unity, what we should hopefully see now is that even if we are not moving, um, I'm not providing any sort of input on the, on the directional keys, if I jump, it detects the wall. Okay, so that's great. Um, let's go into the player script again. And uh, let's create three public vector twos to store the forces for each of the three different types of wall jumps we can do. So public vector two wall jump climb is that first wall jump I demonstrated where I sort of hop up the wall. Um, then public vector two, you can call this wall jump off, just we sort of hop off the wall. And finally, the big one, public vector two, wall leap. All right, and uh, I'd also like to just move this input vector two right up to the top of the update method. And uh, I want to create an integer, um, call it something like wall, uh, wall direction x. And uh, this is just going to be equal to negative one if we are colliding with a wall to the left of us and one if we're colliding with a wall to the right of us. So we can say if, uh, if controller dot collisions dot left, then this will be equal to negative one, otherwise it will be equal to one. Okay, so going down to our jump code, um, this part about only jumping when we are touching the ground is no longer necessarily the case. Um, we'll have two cases here. If wall sliding, then we'll do our wall sliding jump stuff, and if controller dot uh, dot collisions oops dot collisions dot below then we can do our regular jump all right so if we're wall sliding um, let's look at the first type of jump the sort of climb jump where essentially the wall direction x is equal to the input dot x. Okay, so we're trying to move in the same direction as the wall we're facing. So here we can say velocity dot x is equal to negative wall direction x, since we want to move away from it, multiplied by wall jump climb dot x, and velocity dot y will be equal to wall jump climb dot y. Okay, otherwise, the next case is when input dot x is equal to zero. This is where we just sort of jump off the wall. So we can say velocity dot x is equal to negative wall direction um, multiplied by wall jump off dot x and as before, velocity.y is equal to wall jump off dot y. Okay, the final case, we can just say else. This is when we are, uh, when we have an input that is opposite to our wall direction. Um, here, we'll say velocity.x is equal to negative or wall direction x multiplied by wall leap dot x and velocity.y is equal to wall leap dot y. Okay, cool. Let's go into Unity and start giving these some values. So I've experimented with these values beforehand, so to save time, I'm just gonna enter what I found works for me. So 7.5 here, 16 for the y, um, 8.5 and seven, and for the wall leap, a massive 18 on the x-axis and 17 on the y. Okay, let's press play and try this out. So for the little wall climb, it looks like that. The wall jump off looks like that. And the wall leap looks like this. Okay, now the wall leap can be a little bit tricky to perform at times because um, as soon as we sort of start moving in a direction opposite to the wall, we start falling off the wall. So we want to be able to specify some sort of stick time where the character actually sticks to the wall, uh, giving you a moment to press jump um, before it actually falls off the wall. 
Okay, so if we can just find our way back to the player script, let's go to the top and I'm going to create two new variables, a public float wall stick time equal to say a quarter of a second and another float uh, time to wall unstick. Okay, so now in our section on wall sliding over here, I'm going to say that if the time to wall unstick is greater than zero, then we want to start decreasing the time to wall unstick by time dot delta time. Um, of course, we only want to do this if we're uh, if we're sort of moving away from the wall that we're sliding down. So we'll say if um, input dot x is not equal to the direction of the wall and it's also not equal to zero, then we will uh, start counting down our time to wall unstick. If this is not the case, then we'd like to reset our time to wall unstick. So we'll say time to wall unstick is equal to the wall stick time. All right, now, while we want to remain stuck to the wall, we need to, of course, reset velocity.x equal to zero. And uh, this is only going to have any effect if we actually move this line where we calculate velocity x again to come before where we reset it. So we'll move this up here. And uh, another thing we want to reset is this velocity of the smoothing, um, just because we're going to get weird results if we don't reset that. So um, we can just say velocity x smoothing, where's that over here? That should also be equal to zero. Finally, since uh, time to wall unstick starts at zero, uh, none of this is ever going to run. So what we'll actually do is we'll say else. If all of this is not true, then we will also set time to wall unstick equal to wall stick time. And uh, let's try this out now. We seem to be stuck to the wall for roughly a quarter of a second, giving us time to do our little wall leap. Okay, cool. That's everything for this episode. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you have any suggestions for future episodes, let me know in the comments. Cheers.